I'm heading up to Bristol to pick up some wood. Feels good to get, get away from the house for a bit. Road trip! So I'm going up to Arnus Vale, which is a cemetery and nature reserve in Bristol. Uh, my friend Liam works there as one of the groundskeepers. And um, there's a big sycamore tree that I've been working from for a while now, a year or a year and a half, that uh, fell down the summer before last and fell into the main road. And obviously they had to rush out because it was blocking traffic. I'm amazed that it didn't fall on top of anyone. And uh, so they had to rush out, chop up the tree, bring in the sections that had fallen down onto the road. And then the rest of it was just sort of lying in the in amongst the other trees. So every every time I've run out of wood, I've given Liam a shout and um, he's cut up a section for me to go up and collect. I've always tried to get my wood from conservation projects and you know naturally fallen trees uh, and also trying to get it for free as well. Um, so every time you're, I start to run low on wood, it's always quite a panic. And I always wonder, you know, where is my next load going to come from? There might only be this load and maybe another left. So I'll have to start putting the feelers out and seeing if, um, if I know anyone else who can, who can sort me out. What's going on there? One thing I really like to think about is how this one tree that spent its whole life in Bristol, in England, has now been turned into all sorts of wooden spoons and bowls and things like that, and has made its way around the world to live on in people's kitchens, in people's houses, being used all the time. I think that's so cool. I've sent stuff to all over Europe, USA, Australia, the Middle East, Japan, where else? Central America, I think. Has something been to South America? I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever sent anything to Africa. Yeah, if you have anything that you've bought from me that's made from Sycamore, or actually anything that you bought from me at all, let me know in the comments where you come from because uh, it'd be really cool to put together a bit of a map of how far and wide my spoons and bowls and things like that have, have gone. There's a bunch of roads closed on the way to Bristol. The main road, basically. So I'm just having to take a bunch of diversions, testing my, testing my local geography knowledge. Da -da -da -da. <sighs> Picked a bad day to go up to Bristol. Sorry, Liam, I'm going to be late. Let's go this way. This should be right. Right. Now, hoping there's no more closures up this way, we should be. En route. En route up to Bristol. Alright, my babber. Here we are. Looks like Liam's van there. So, this is Arnus Vale. It's a pretty cool place to come and have a walk around. Sorts of fancy buildings. And I think this is a crypt.
Nice, I got a good load of sycamore now. Um, that should keep me going for a bit. And uh, hopefully the suspension will, <laughs> will hold on the way home. So, big shout out to Liam for uh, hooking me up all this time. He also gave me all of the elm that I've been carving recently. Um, we used to work together at the Wildlife Trust in Bristol. Or volunteer. We volunteered at first and then we, we got a bit of paid work. Uh, so we went through our chainsaw tickets together. We've done quite a bit of practical stuff. And uh, it's nice to see him every time I go and pick up some wood and we have a bit of a catch up. He does a bit of woodwork himself, so we usually start geeking out about uh, about wood, spoons. We're both quite into our fungi as well, so we uh, usually have a bit of a chat about fungi and all sorts of stuff. What time is it? Two o'clock. Oh, I'm starving. It's really grey and gloomy today. There's a storm on the way, apparently tomorrow. Which will be lovely. That wood just rolling around in the back. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, fresh the wood still is. Side. I haven't been there for so long. It's a bit, it's a bit spalted, but even down towards the base, which basically disintegrated, and that's why the tree fell down. <coughs> there's, very, there's, there's no rotten wood in there. But we were just looking back at the cemetery. We were just looking at the in between the wood and the bark. There's all these little kind of tendrils, which we think are probably from honey fungus, which would explain why the tree rotted at the roots and fell down. I'll show you when we get back. Oh, crunch. So we'll all wait in the back, wait for the crunch. And we're home. That was an exciting trip out, wasn't it? Some nice spalting in this sycamore. So it's gonna be some really nice colors. Get some good spoons out of that. This is a good spot to keep it, it's uh, undercover because there's all this ivy up here so it's not going to just get rained on and go rotten too quickly. It's out of the sun so it's not going to dry out quickly even though it's not too warm at the moment. But And so that's going to avoid any of the end grain cracking so it means well, I'm not going to bother even sealing the wood. It will start to spalt a bit more which is fine but I'll get through it quite quick so I'm not too worried about that. You can see here all these stringy bits which are mycelia from the fungus kind of like fungus roots like if I peel this back, look at all this it's almost certainly the reason why the tree fell down it's because this fungus was growing on it it's amazing how it grows, it's just like the roots of a plant so apparently there was no sign that the tree was um, was rotting at all. The 
from the ground up looked really healthy, but when it fell over they realised that the roots were completely rotten and gone. So I'm sure it was because of the fungus. We put this little guy in the, in the mud. So you might have seen on my Instagram this week I had a bit of a rant about a difficult log that I was having that just wasn't splitting the way that I wanted it to and it ended up putting me back about a day and a half just because difficult grain and um, splits in the wood and all sorts of things. And that sort of stuff, you know, it's not unusual. Thankfully it doesn't happen that often but it's just it's just part and parcel of, of this kind of work. So, I mean, it is so frustrating. And, you know, you're wasting wood, you're taking so much energy and not getting much out of it. In the end, I think I got, um, I got about 30 billets out of the log that I was hoping to get maybe 45 from. Ones like this that just weren't work, that just didn't work. You know, there's a, there's a bit of a dark line here, I don't know if you can see, which is just an internal split that has made this billet completely useless because it runs straight down the length and up to here. But I mean, that's just stuff you have to deal with and there's no point sort of crying about wasted time because it happens. So then I got enough billets out of it in the end and axed them down and drew the shapes and I started axing them out today and seven of the first ten have turned out to also be useless. Got things like this one that looks fine from the top and you start axing the side and it's actually got a split all the way down the handle. Yeah. Same in this one, same in this one hidden split in the back that opens up when you start axing. What's the best way to deal with spoons that don't work? Burn them! This is spoon carver's therapy. Thanks for watching, hope to see you next episode which will be a tool special. I'll be talking about my main spoon carving tools. Bye.